De fructu operum tuorum domine satiabit utera. Ut educas panem de terra, et vinum this Sunday proclaims the 13th to 15th verses of Psalm 104. Before this, in the beginning of the psalm, it is full of a fear and trembling before the awesome power of God manifested in his creation. You fixed the earth on its foundation so it can never be shaken. The deeps covered it like a garment. Above the mountains stood the waters. At your rebuke they took flight as the sound of your thunder they fled. But as the psalmist continues, it is not only the raw power that strikes him, but also the sublime authority by which God arranges all things. You set a limit they cannot pass. Never again will they cover the earth. You made springs flow in wadis that wind among the mountains. They give drink to every beast of the field. Here, wild asses quench their thirst. Beside them, the birds of the heavens nest. Among the branches they sing. You water the mountains from your chambers. But the wonder of the psalmist does not stop there. It goes deeper, culminating in the words of the communio. Not only is all of creation provided for with exquisite governance and care, but even more wonderful, man is invited into God's divine work. He is the one who, de fructu operum tuorum, from the fruit of God's works, i.e. the grain and the grape and the olive, he brings forth through the work of human hands, bread, wine, and oil. And why? For what purpose? We hear the beautiful answer to this question given form in the chant, in two words especially, laetificet and exhilaret which gush forth in the two highest points of the music to bring joy to the heart of man and to make his face shine. It is no accident that each of the four elements mentioned in this psalm, water, bread, wine, and oil, is matter by which, in the sacraments, Christ and his church communicates the unending joy and light of his divine life. De fructu operum tuorum domine satiabit utera. Ut educas panem de terra, et vinum leticet cor Exilaret faciem in o 